Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. I have a lot of information, a lot of stuff that I just was made aware of in uh, listening to Dr. Barry, and wow, it's mind blowing. And when I put it on the timeline, it runs like clockwork, it fits perfectly. And uh, without him, I would have never understood this, and I'm going to show it all to you. Um, A lot of stuff's been going on. Uh, when the stress is high, people will begin to um, argue with one another. And there's a verse in the Bible that warns us not to do that. And so I will never do that. And uh, I will always support any channel. Let me start off today by saying Jesus Christ is God. Emmanuel, God with us. He came here wrapped in flesh to do a job that only he could do, save us from ourselves and our sin. He died on a cross. He defeated death three days later and rose. He is God Almighty. He is creator. He was here from everlasting past to everlasting future. He is everything that we need and we need nothing more. And if I hear any channel that says this, I will subscribe to them. If I don't hear that, I won't subscribe. Anyone that I have promoted will say that. Everything else that they say is us simply trying to get to this date and possibly being wrong, which you know has happened because we have not figured out this date yet. It's not for a lack of trying. It's not for glory. It's not for uh, because, uh, you know, we get all these accolades because we don't. Uh, we're in the crosshairs as we do this. And I'm okay with that because, to me, the most important thing is Jesus Christ and what he did when he came here. Everything else, again, is just us trying to figure this out. So let's get into this. There's a lot of things that I found that um, you're going to need to put in your back pocket as I go through, and then we'll pull them back out and discuss them as I get to the final timeline. I'd say final, to the end timeline. There are always updates. There are always things that I find that when I do and I put them on here, they just fit like a glove. And I've always had a problem. I've showed you this with the Pentecost, Shavuot, and Ascension Day. I could not 100% get them to line up or a Pentecost would fall on a day that really meant nothing. I want you to remember this. I'm going to talk about this real quick. There are two Jubilees running side by side. One started at creation. The other started at the fall of man. One started... I thought I saw something. Um, one started... Uh, and they run seven years apart. So that's why, and it was set up from the very beginning, why we have a rapture of the bride and seven years later, also at a jubilee ending, we have the millennium beginning. And that fits perfectly like a glove. In 1993, is a, is, is 1,993 years ago, is when Jesus went to the cross. We know that this rapture event that we've been so looking forward to is about to happen at any moment. Now, we also know that there are two Shemitahs running side by side. In Exodus 12, God changed the head of the year. On the timeline that I work on, remember, my timeline is for one year. My birthday is on a day. It's not on it, it, on a on a date. It's not on a specific day. It doesn't change each year because of the moon. It doesn't change. It changes days, but it doesn't change the date. It's always on that date. And I firmly believe that all these events will land perfectly on a date. And this timeline stands from year to year, and it never changes. I don't think it moves around. That's just me. I'm not going to argue with anyone who says it does because if they're right and I get to heaven, I'm not going to be like, 
you insisted, I'm not insisting, I'm just saying I believe this timeline is accurate. It's a one-year timeline. There are those who've searched out the 7,000 years. There's those like Dr. Barry who's done enough. <laughs> I couldn't even hold a candle to him finding all of these uh, scenarios throughout the year. And all I did was take everything that I've learned and, and, and I scour over everybody's videos trying to learn something new and apply it to this one-year timeline that repeats every single year. So the two Shemitahs, you know that God said in Exodus 12, this now will be the head of your year. It was on, let me find it, Feast of Trumpets. It was on September the 15th. God moved it back six months to the head of the year being March the 17th. I believe this is accurate because not only is it the day of equal parts, and you can look it up now, and you can go forward in time and date 600 years, and you can go back 600 years, and you'll see that the same exact moment, as a matter of fact, like I said before, and I wish I would have taken a picture of that, whatever, and I don't know what it is right now, but whatever, let me see if, I don't know if I can do this, because I'm offline, let me see if I can do this, I don't know if I can, I was studying the wave offering, and I'll show you that here in a moment. Um, go down here. Go to sun and moon. Pick a city. We always pick Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Israel. We go down here, and we look at the length of a day. So today is what may the... 24th. We go down here to May the 24th and it'll highlight it for you. On this day, every single year, for, from creation until now, there will be 13 hours and 57 minutes in this day. It'll jump around a few seconds each year, but it'll always be 13 hours and 57 minutes on this day. Now, what day on the 30th? On the 30th, there will be 14 hours and three minutes every single year. It will always be that. That's how you know what day this is. It doesn't move. It doesn't change. It always is 14 hours and three minutes on the 30th. Okay. Let me get rid of that and get back here to this and start talking about this. We're going to start here. This is my timeline that I made at the head of the year. Um, when I had discovered all of this stuff, and I knew, oops, I did that wrong. I knew I did that wrong too. Let me see, where did it go? This is it, right? Yes. I knew the dates, and as I went through <clears throat> the year, excuse me, I was able, as I learned, to add separate, different events. <clears throat> I want you to notice here on Savon 15, the 75th day of the year. How do I know that's the 75th day of the year? Come over here to the bottom. Nissan has 30 days, IR has 30 days, and Savon has 31. We are counting to the 15th of Savon. So Nissan 30, IR 30, that's 60 plus 15 days for Savon. I surmised back here that Abraham was born and I put BC, I've learned that that's actually 1948 from creation. 1948 years after creation, he was born. And 2,023 years after creation, he crossed into the land of Canaan. But this is back when I did this. I think this was back in um, when I built this was, uh, I want to say, I want to say it was back in February of... Uh, not, not, no, back in, it was before the end of the year. So it was back after, I guess it was maybe November, December. I don't recall, but it's, it's been six months I've been adding to this timeline. But you'll see Abraham is 75 at Canaan right there, Savon 15. I moved it because I had studied other people's channels and, and they surmised that Abraham must have crossed into the land of Canaan when Israel was given back their land on May 14th of 1948. But to me and other studies that I had done, it would have made more sense that on the 75th day, Abraham was 75 
when he crossed into the land of Canaan. All right, let's go on to the next picture. Personal concerns. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, for Moth hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. He's talking about a saint here, and is departed from Thessalonica, Crescens, and Galatia, Titus, and Dematia. Only Luke is with me. This is the bride. Only Luke is with me. Now he's also saying, take Mark. Mark is the sleepy church. How long after the bride is taken will Mark be taken? I don't know. But here you see very clearly that Luke is with him, and we're also going to go grab Mark. Uh, I, was <laughs> I was talking with Spinebreaker. I said, this rapture watching ain't easy. Or it ain't for sissies. It's not easy at all knowing and yet not knowing. We know this is coming. We just don't know exactly when. And uh, it says, let me finish. But there are... There we are. The world is blissfully ignorant to what's about to happen, and we look like the crazy ones. So here we are, and it, it is, it is, it's, it's not an easy path that I've chosen to go down here, and uh, never thought about uh, walking away or deleting the channel. But I have prayed and said, God, I don't have anything else. I don't, I don't see anything else. And right about that time, something else will pop up and I'll be like, all right, I'm going to go talk about it. Just like this, something huge, actually this is very huge, has popped up and I'm here talking about it. And so this is not for the faint of heart. This is uh, this is a lot of work, and uh, you know I I would never never try to get paid for any of this. One dime have I ever made? I won't I won't do it um, because um, uh, the Holy Spirit gives to me freely, and I want to give back freely. And I'm praying praying that some of you mathematicians out there, and some of you uh, people that enjoy a timeline. Uh, would help me. This is for everyone to watch. Not everyone fully comprehends the timeline, and I get that because it's becoming thick. There's a lot of stuff that, that starts to come in here, and a lot of numbers that jump back and forth, and it and, and it makes sense to me because I built it and I understand it, and I, I see I see it what's happening. So I'm going to try to relate that to you. Let me get back to this. That keeps happening. Let's see. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, this is speaking in Luke, and, and all three Gospels say the same exact thing. Now, upon, God wanted to make it very clear to us where and when Jesus rose. Jesus rose the first day of the week, very early in the morning. The first day of the week is Sunday. Jesus rose on Sunday, very early in the morning. How do we count the Pentecost? This is not, I want to say this very clearly because um, Dr. Barry came under a little bit of fire here, but he can handle it. He's a tough guy. Um, Shavuot, he is correct. And I found it. Finally, finally, I found it. Uh, uh, he said it, and, and and I know that he does such a good job that, that uh, he wouldn't say it if it weren't something that he sees. And I wanted, and I wanted the Holy Spirit to guide me like he guides Dr. Barry. So when he says that Shavuot is not Pentecost, I get upset. Uh, instantly I get upset because I'm like, Dr. Barry, if Shavuot is not Pentecost, Pentecost, and it very clearly says right here in the Bible that Pentecost is when the Holy Spirit came. You're trying to tell me that from Shavuot, I have to count the Sabbath after, 49 days or seven weeks, and then the day after that is the day of Pentecost. 
that's what you're telling me. And I wrestled with that. And I'm like, I can't understand why he would say something like that and be so categorically wrong. That would mean that Shavuot would come and go and we would wait another 57 days. You have to show me why the Holy Spirit would have to wait. When Jesus clearly said in in very short time after I leave, the Holy Spirit will come down. The Holy Spirit does not come down on Shavuot. Shavuot is the Feast of Weeks. It is a 50-day count after Jesus rises. I'm going to show you that, but it is not the day the Holy Spirit came. If it is not the day the Holy Spirit came, then what are we doing? We're waiting 57 days for the Holy Spirit to come after Shavuot, so which is why I said Shavuot has to be the day the Holy Spirit came. And Dr. Barry, I believe, if I don't want to confuse his words because I don't want to get into trouble, but I believe Dr. Barry said Shavuot is the day Jesus ascends. Um, now, the Feast of Pentecost. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. What's the morrow after the Sabbath? What is this pointing to? This is pointing to the day Jesus rises because we know that Jesus rose on a Sunday. He rose on the first day of the week. So, hopefully the, the, the pictures are going along with my words. Ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. So, from Sunday, from that day, ye brought the sheaf wave and wave offering. Okay, I don't know 100%, or I didn't know, I do now, 100% what that meant. Even seven, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So, we land on a Sunday, but then it says, even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number 50 days. So now we're dealing with, we start on a Sunday, the day Jesus rose. We count from the following Sabbath, which is seven days away, or six days away, and then you count the 50 days, and then the following day is the Pentecost, which means the Pentecost would land on a Monday. Put that in your back pocket for a second. There's a lot of stuff going in your back pocket. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now, this is when the Holy Spirit comes down. He comes down on Pentecost. He does not come down on the wave offering, the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot. He comes down on Pentecost. Super clear. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven of, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I wanted to touch on that for one point here real quick. Other tongues, in my opinion, and I could be corrected on this part, but in my opinion, it's simply another language. I speak Spanish fluently. Yo se puede hablar en español perfectamente. Me aprender mi español en Miami, con los cubanos Miami. Now, I am speaking in tongues. I am speaking a language that you, or not all of you, but a lot of you, do not understand. You don't understand what I just said, or you can pick up basically what I just said. Anyway, there will always be an interpreter. There will always be somebody in this YouTube that understands Spanish and will be able to translate that for you. In my opinion, and, and, and probably will get corrected by this. Speaking in tongues is simply another language. It's not some language that nobody can understand. And there's usually, when one person is speaking Spanish, another Latin person in the room that is able to translate that language so that the English speakers can understand what was just said. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this noised Abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because every, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. He was speaking in tongues, and he was able to speak in their language. That's the tongue he was speaking. So I probably get a lot of feedback from that, but uh, I believe that.
believe that's it. So uh, I wanted to uh, promote uh, We Are the Overcomers. Um, he had a a video the other day. I thought it was I, he was doing a live chat, and I was in there um, making comments, and he said no. I don't want to, and he was concerned, and I really I really respect uh, Brother Wayne over there. He says, I think Repo Man is wrong about his Pentecost, but he didn't go into it, I think, perhaps out of respect for me. Wayne, it's okay. I am so open to correction. You have no idea. I literally wish anybody on the planet would help me with this and see what I'm seeing. And, and, and to your credit, Wayne, you are correct. I had it wrong, and I'm going to show what I'm thinking here. And Wayne, please, I'm going to be in your next live chat. Uh, uh, please correct me. I am all about being corrected. Uh, no problem with that whatsoever. Um, I'm going to promote something here or talk about something here. And Wayne, I'd like your input, uh, if possible, on your next live. Hopefully I'm there when I see it come on. Um, but I want your input on this to see if this jives with the Bible and if you think that what I'm about to say to everyone out there uh, will work. And this is, of course, I have to promote Dr. Barry because a lot of this comes from him. He is an amazing teacher. He is so awesome uh, with his uh, feast days and everything else. And uh, I've taken his feast days and applied it to my annual timeline and uh, everything fits like a glove. It's perfect in every way. And I just love this brother so much and how hard he works um, to, uh, to, to get the word out there to, to everyone. And so that we might, uh, and again, I've said this before, at the end of the day, Amos 3.7 says he is going to tell his bride, I'm a bride, you're a bride, or the church, as it were. And he's going to tell us. He's not going to um, tell me, me alone, I'm going to figure this out. My timeline's going to work, and I'm going to know the date. That's not how this is going to happen. It's going to be all of us. He's going to tell all of us. And I don't know if it's going to be a trumpet blast. You know, we know that there is some kind of a warning. I don't know if it's three days before we see the graves open. I don't know if it's 40 days before, like Nineveh was warned. I don't know if it's seven days, like um, Noah was warned to get into the ark. I don't know if it's three days, like uh, um, Saul, Paul, was blinded uh, before he went into Nineveh, and then he could see. I don't know how long it is. I don't know if it's the five months that have been cut short. I don't know if that's what it is. I don't know how long it is after the church goes that the saints go. I do know, and I don't know when we're going to get our warning, how long before that, if there's even one. Um, I'm just surmising that there is. So, to clarify all that, I want to just show respect to this brother for all of his hard work. All right. Now, this is where... This is where my brain explodes. Pentecost, we know, is the day that the Holy Spirit came down. We know that it happens on, you begin your count on the Sabbath after, you count your seven weeks, and then the following day is the day that um, the Holy Spirit comes down. It comes down on a Pentecost. This bothers me when I find this passage that Dr. Barry, I believe, is talking about. The offering consisted of one omer of freshly harvested grain as a wave in the temple. It was offered on Passover. Okay, the Jews are offering this on Passover. When does this wave offering happen? For us, the Christian. This will blow your mind. Jesus went to the cross. He went down to Hades to lead captivity captive, to seize the keys of Hades from Satan, and to resurrect triumphantly on the third day, blew that tomb wide open, walked out before sunrise. He did this on a Sunday, and he defeated death. He's holding the keys to Hades. He walks, you can read the account for yourself, he walks around with people, have witnessed him that entire day. 
a lot of things are talked about that he did on that day. But guess what? He told Mary, do not touch me for I have not ascended to my father. He could not be touched by anyone other than, and if you'll read the, the, the four Gospels, you'll see that only in the Gospel of Luke and only in the Gospel of John did they handle him. They did not handle him in the Gospel of Mark and in Matthew because the Mark group is talking to the saints of the tribulation and the Matthew group is talking specifically or predominantly to the Jews. They, there's not a single passage in those two books of where you will find him being touched by them. So, what blows my mind here is that they are counting not 57 days, not from the Sabbath after. They are counting exactly 49 days from Passover. And so I did. I did the same thing. I read this and I counted from that. But wait a second. What did Jesus do when he rose on that day, that afternoon? He rose early in the morning, but he stayed here all day, but then he disappears. You don't see any record of Jesus whatsoever until the following Sunday, seven days later, when he sees Thomas in the upper room. They are locked in that upper room because they are afraid. They are afraid because Jesus is not walking with them for those 40 days yet. What did Jesus do and why did he have to go to heaven? Why couldn't he be touched? And here's the answer to that. Jesus is the wave offering. The wave offering begins its count, its 49-day count from when? And why a 49-day count? He begins it when? He begins it when he rises, not from Passover. The count begins when he rises. He rises on a Sunday and 50 days later exactly lands on Shavuot. That's the counting of the of the uh, of the Omer. That's the day Jesus went to heaven and presented himself, the living sacrifice, the savior of the world, and there must have been quite a celebration. And he spent seven days up there with them. And he returns with his new body to Thomas in the upper room on Sunday, seven, eight days later. All right, I'm going to show you all that. When this, when I see this, I'm still... I see what Dr. Barry is saying. He is correct. Shavuot is not Pentecost. Shavuot is not the day that the, that the uh, Holy Spirit came down. If you count from the date that Jesus rose to the date that Jesus ascended in front of everyone, you will see the 50 days. Jesus ascended on Shavuot. I've had this count wrong for some time. I didn't know why um, Dr. Barry could possibly make that statement, and it drove me insane because I knew when he said Shavuot wasn't Pentecost, I'm like, well, how is that possible? How are we supposed to wait 57 days for the Holy Spirit to come back when Jesus clearly said, he's coming right back. I'm going, he's coming right back. I surmised that it was three days. The count fit perfectly if he had ascended, but it doesn't actually. It's off by three days, and I'm going to show you that here in a moment. It's, it's actually mind-blowing. All right. Now, this is the timeline that I have been showing you for some time. With a few minor adjustments here and there, um, you will see up there the two arrows, Shavuot, Feast of Weeks, and Jesus Ascends. I had shown him ascending on the 6th, uh, on, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Sivan 3. I surmised, I did that because he said, I will, re I go, and in, and in a few days, I could not, I could, and, and the reason I counted from there is because Jesus walked with man for 40 days after he came back to Thomas in the upper room, right? And he ascended. So I have a gap there that I'm that I'm working out. Um, Jesus defeats death. Seven days later, Tom's in the upper room. Forty days he walks with man. And then there's these three days. Does Shavuot move to where Jesus ascends? Or does Jesus ascend move to Shavuot? But from there, you count 57 days and you land on Pentecost, which is July 16th. 
That's a long time to wait for the Holy Spirit to come, right? That's not the correct count. I'm going to show you why here in a moment. Hang in there. I'm going to use that probably uh, on my timeline here. I wonder if I missed something. I went through that awfully quick. What did I miss? So I guess I, I guess I did get it. So uh, Jesus rises and defeats death. Jesus goes to heaven, and he is the wave offering. He comes back after seven days to Thomas in the upper room. That's where the 40-day count begins and goes on. And this is why I thought this is where Jesus ascends. I thought Shabbat would have been three days later, but it's not. It's right there with it. So Shabbat, I believe, moves back to where Jesus ascends 40 days after he sees Thomas in the upper room. Now, the 50-day count I showed you earlier to put into your back pocket. Jesus rises and defeats death. This is when, again, the sheath offering. It clearly teaches us to count 49 days and unto the morrow is the day. So there's this three days in here that's driving me nuts. But let's go back to the Pentecost count where it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord and in one place. We know this is when the Holy Spirit comes on Pentecost. The Feast of Pentecost, ye shall count unto you from the morrow... After the Sabbath, from the day, what's the morrow after the Sabbath? That's Sunday. That's the day Jesus rode. From the day that ye brought the sheaf wave offering, when did Jesus do the sheaf wave offering? When he rose. The Jews are counting from Passover. Our count begins from when Jesus rose on Sunday. This is where it blew my mind. This is where, this is the kicker right here. I thought that we would count. This count would begin on Shavuot. I was wrong. We go back, we overlap, just like the two Jubilees overlap, just like the two Shemitah cycles overlap, these overlap as well. The count begins at Jesus. Everything always begins at Jesus. Jesus rises on a Sunday. You shall count from the morrow after the Sabbath. What's this after the Sabbath? It's Sunday. From the day that ye brought the sheaf wave offering. When was the sheaf wave offering brought? Jesus brought it when he went to heaven on that Sunday afternoon. He was seen by many throughout that day. He rose to heaven. He stayed up there seven days and returned to Thomas in the upper room. Seven complete Sabbaths, 49 days, even unto the morrow after the Sabbath. You shall number 50 days. 50 days. I have been counting. Where are you at? I have been counting from the Shavuot. I was wrong. The count begins here when Jesus rises and defeats death. The 57 days afterwards will land on May the 30th. Devon 15. The date that I had highlighted previously or I mean, that I whited out previously because I didn't know exactly when Abraham uh, crossed into Canaan. This is the Pentecost. The Pentecost is nine days after Shavuot. Nine days after. This is exactly, on May 30th, it will be exactly 153 days to the flood, which is five months cutting the time short to five months. This is the day that Enoch calls Shavuot. It is not. It is the Pentecost. Enoch, I know I missed a bunch of stuff. That's what's going on. I skipped over somewhere. Let me go back to here. Grieve not, okay, this is back to, and gr that, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. 
Be ye kind unto one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sakes, has forgiven you. Back to that. We are to fill each other up, help each other. We're not to be tearing each other down. All right. April the 3rd, the day Jesus rose, to May the 30th, the day of Pentecost, is 57 days. Exactly. Shavuot. This is the, the Enoch timeline. It blew my mind always how Enoch called Shavuot on Savan 15. I should have put it on Savan 15 since, uh, but it didn't match when Jesus went rose and his 40 days and his seven days and his three days. It did not match the Feast of Weeks. Why is the Feast of Weeks showing up on Savan 6 and Enoch says that this happens? on Savan 15. I think these people have um, named it wrong, right? named it in, incorrectly. Savan 15 is not the, the uh, and you're supposed to reckon 50 days from the first Sabbath after the Passover. Okay, so it's after the resurrection. Why are there nine days difference over what we thought and what it is? Because nine is the divine completeness. Conveys, it conveys the meaning of finality. The number nine, that's how many days are between Shavuot, that we've just discovered, and Pentecost, the day the Holy Spirit came down. This is his divine completeness right here. All right, this is what I wanted. That, that's, that's where I messed up right there. Let me go here, right here. All right, let's go. We're going to go back to 2022 because the dates on the Gregorian calendar actually match the correct days. Um, it's a rarity. It only happens, I think, once every 11 years. So, March the, uh, March the 16th, on a Wednesday, is the day of equal parts. It always is the day of equal parts. It's the day where there are 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night. March the 17th is the head of the year. Every single year. It doesn't change. So Jesus went to the cross on March the 30th. Jesus spent March the 31st, April the 1st, and April the 2nd during the day in the grave. Three days. He spent the 30th at night, the 31st at night, and the 1st at night in the grave. Three full days. On the 2nd, as soon as the sun had set, it became the 3rd in Israel. It was the 3rd. He did not complete this night. It very clearly says they came very early in the morning before the sun had risen and he had already, before the sun came up and he had already risen. The third is the day that Jesus rises, April the third. That's the day Jesus rose. When you count 50 days from there correctly, you will land on the 21st. Did I do that right? May the 21st. Oh, May the 21st. Right here. It is a Sabbath. Um, the day after, and that's where I made my mistake. Right there is where I made my mistake. I thought you counted from, the, from Shavuot 57 days, but you don't. Both of these counts overlap. They both start at when Jesus rose. One of them ends on Shavuot. The other one ends nine days later on Pentecost. This is the day the Holy Spirit came. This is why that I couldn't wrap my mind around the fact that the Holy Spirit did not come down on Shavuot. It came down on Pentecost. It clearly says it in the Bible verse I showed you. And why it didn't match up. And that's because there's an overlapping count. There are two things happening at the same time. Jesus rises and defeats death. He goes to heaven, he delivers the Omer count, the wave offering, and then he comes back to Thomas in the upper room. When he comes back to Thomas in the upper room, you count those 40 days, and then Jesus ascends. I'm still trying to tie in Jesus ascending with those um, 40 days, no, with Shavuot. 
Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking. Okay, so I went through this, didn't I? Oh, this is the beginning of my show of the uh, of the program. I wanted to show you that this is a spiritual gift right here. Um, you can go up to anyone who doesn't believe in God and ask them to say this, and they simply won't. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Remember, whoever has the Holy Ghost in them uh, can't get rid of the Holy Ghost. People are upset over the once saved, always saved. I call it once covered, always covered. Once that blood gets on you, you can't get it off. Once you're covered in it, it doesn't wash off. You don't have that power. You don't have that ability. Um, you get a, like, have you, have you, I don't know if any of you have ever changed oil in a diesel engine, but that oil, when it touches your skin, will turn your skin black. And it will take days for that oil to come off of your skin because it's it's cooked it's a different type of it's not like oil in a car diesel oil is completely different and it will it will stain you the same thing and of course you can get that off but when you're covered by the blood of christ you can't get that off anybody who says that you can lose your salvation doesn't have the understanding that jesus once he's covered you he doesn't come in and Oh, I made a mistake. Let me come in there and wipe that off of you, and now you're, uh, you know, now you're not covered. It doesn't work like that. Salvation is permanent. It's solid, and it never ends. It doesn't matter. Your actions will prove not that you won't sin, because you will, but you won't sin willingly. You won't sin with pleasure. You will hate it every second of it, um, but you will make a mistake, but you are covered. Once you are covered, you're always covered. And so the once saved, always saved, you're just not understanding what, what they're trying to say. And it's true. Uh, once you're covered, you're, you cannot wash that blood. Once it's on you and you're staying, you're, you're, that's it. You're saved. There's nothing you can do to stop that. The question is, are you covered? That's the question. So... Let's go back to the photos. I didn't just stop the video, I hope. Okay, no, I didn't. All right, let's go back to the photos. Now, I noticed something here, and I forgot to point it out when we're looking at the timeline. This is kind of incredible, actually. This was the clincher that kind of led me to believe that this is accurate. On Wednesday, May the 31st, the day after Pentecost is fully come, which is 57 days after Jesus rises, because we count from when Jesus rises, because of the uh, comment made that it is the, the day after the Sabbath, which we all know that day. The day after the Sabbath is Sunday. The day after the Sabbath is the day Jesus rose. But when you count from May 31st, the day after the Pentecost, 153 days, you will land on the date the flood began. 153 days. I did not, this is blew my mind when this came up. Did you know that there are 153 days from the date the flood began all the way up to the date Jesus rises? 57 days later, the Holy Spirit comes down on Pentecost. It overlaps Shavuot by nine days. From that, from the very next day, you count, from May 31st, which is the very next day, you count 153 days, and you will land again on the flood. So you have everything circles back to Jesus on this. It all comes back to him. All counts start at that Omer count, that wave offering that Jesus did when he went to heaven. All of it starts there, and it all ends with him. It starts with him, and it ends with him. I showed you this where Abraham, um, oh, I thought Abraham was there, and I moved it, and I kind of regret that now. I wish that I hadn't moved that. 
Brothers and brothers. Okay, only Luke was with me. I showed you all of this. I had just what I had done is gone to the wrong calendar. Now upon the first day of the week, let's get back to. And like I showed you here very clearly, it is a different count. The uh, Dr. Barry is 100% correct. Shavuot is not Pentecost. Pentecost is the day the Holy Spirit came. And I'm still trying to tie Jesus ascending on Shavuot. Uh, we're three days apart, but there, again, we have those three days that Jesus was in the tomb. So there's there's something that I'm going to try to figure out. Okay. Like I showed you here. Right here, Pentecost is the day the Holy Spirit came. We read that. Five months. Is the time cut short for the saints of the tribulation to five months? Are they looking at October the 31st to go? Are we looking at May 30th to go? It is only nine days after Shavuot. Shavuot is the Feast of Weeks. Shavuot is the date that uh, Dr. Barry says that Jesus rose. I'm still trying to get to there. I'm trying to figure out. I showed Jesus rising. Um, him going to him rising uh, from the, the tomb on April the 3rd. Going to heaven to perform this ceremony, the wave offering. Coming back to Thomas in the upper room where they were locked away, hiding out. And 40 days later, he walked with man and he ascended, and then three days later was Shavuot. If I move Shavuot back, then I don't get the 50-day count from when Jesus rises. Oh, wait a second. Oh, hold on a second. If I move Shavuot back three days, then I go back to the cross, and then that count from Passover would be accurate. Oh, that's very interesting. That is super interesting. From the cross to the day Jesus ascended, if we count that, the 50 days, then we do land on Shavuot. See, I knew I knew it would come up. So Shavuot does move, and it has nothing to do with the... Shavuot has nothing to do with the Pentecost count of the Holy Spirit, because it starts at when Jesus rose, 57 days later. 57 days later is when the Holy Spirit came down which would be May 30th. It would be fitting that a rapture event could take place on May the 30th, uh, 2000 or 1,993 years ago. The Holy Spirit comes down and then it's taken away because it's in us, because we are covered, a covering that we cannot get off of us once we have it. Um, and then on May the 30th, is the day we go. I, I just blew that just kind of blew my own mind right there. I didn't see that. So Shava Oat moves back. Now I see what Dr. Barry's talking about. Shava Oat moves back and we count from we count from when Jesus rises for for Pentecost, but we count from when Jesus goes to the cross for Shava Oat and it still matches perfectly. Hmm. Very interesting. I saw all that and I said, oh, I got to go make a video. And I wish I'd slowed down for a second uh, to catch that because he did say that Shavuot is the date Jesus ascended. And now I can see that too, because if we go from the cross, it's there. So um, if you have anything, uh, we all work together. Uh, nobody's an island. And uh, Dr. Barry knows fervently that Jesus Christ is God. So uh, follow him, I follow his channel, subscribe to him and, and watch all of his content. So um, other than that, he could be wrong. I could be wrong. I'm sure he is wrong before I'm wrong. No, <laughs> that's not true. Dr. Barry is very smart. So um, keep watching and I'm going to upload this. I'm going to keep studying this. And if I, I think I need to move that 50 days from, from when the cross happened to the time that Jesus ascended as being Shavuot because Dr. Barry found that information. And to me, he's uh, very studious and he knows. So we keep, uh, keep working together here and try to figure this out. Um, May the 30th, that's six days. Man. So I believe that God's not going to tell me, Dr. Barry, or anyone for that matter, um, Wayne over at We Are the Overcomer, he's not going to tell us to tell you. 
The bio, Amos 3, 7 is super abundantly clear. He will do nothing lest he warn. He's, he warns. He's going to warn. Um, these very small YouTube channels, I think I have 14,000 subscribers. Dr. Barry has 30, 30 or 40 as a lot. Uh, but it still doesn't even scratch the surface of 8 billion people on this planet. It doesn't even come close. And so um, for the largest YouTube you can imagine that has a million subscribers even uh, makes a statement of that they know the date um, still doesn't scratch the surface of 8 billion people. So I think that Amos 3.7 will be fulfilled ultimately by God. And uh, that means that uh, everyone that is about to be raptured is going to have some kind of, there's going to be some kind of spectacular event on the planet that we're going to be like, oh, I know what that is. And we're going to relate it properly to our departure date or the last second. There's a trumpet blast that everybody hears. Because remember when Elijah went up, the 50 prophets were back there. They witnessed it. They didn't know what happened. They didn't believe. Um, but Elisha, Elisha knew exactly what just happened. And he tore off the world and put on that cloak. And he began his ministry, which was more powerful, twice as powerful as Elijah's was. So. The same thing is going to happen for them. And so, I don't know, go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody. And accept the Lord in your heart. It's a private moment between you and your father. Um, those channels that I put on there, um, Wayne, he's just, he's fine. Dr. Barry, I'm pretty sure that everybody subscribed to him. But uh, Wayne, we are the overcomers. Please go subscribe to his channel. These guys... Uh, he, he does a really good job. And listen to his testimony from, I think it was 1989 or 1986. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Um, so uh, go watch their channels and try, if you hear anything or see anything, don't be afraid. If I'm wrong, don't be afraid to tell me I'm wrong because, uh, you know, I will, like, gladly try to figure this out. I have to see it, obviously. And I can see where Dr. Barry is saying that. And I just couldn't wrap my mind around counting 57 days after Shavuot, and I was wrong. It clearly says the Pentecost is to be counted from when Jesus rose, the, the, the uh, day after the Sabbath, and then you go the following Sabbath, and then you count 49 days, and then the next day, and it's super clear, and I just didn't see it before, and I see it now. So Pentecost is literally nine days after. Um, or if we move Shavuot over to Jesus ascending to where it might actually be, 14 days. So 14 days after Shavuot would be Pentecost because we're going to start our count from uh, where Jesus, I got to go restudy that and make sure that I understand that completely uh, as to when uh, exactly I need to start the 50 day count and exactly when I need to start the 57 day count, the Sabbath after, if the event took place on a, uh, a Sunday, which Jesus rose on a Sunday, so the Sabbath after would be seven days. Anyway, I just ran in here real quick because I found that and I wanted to present it to you. And so uh, we'll chat with you again later.